Hello everybody, I am Rexy's Gaming Bro, your host here on Mini Sorna in Jurassic World Evolution 2. That is right guys, a ultimate new series has arrived for Jurassic World Evolution 2 here on Rexy's Gaming Bro. And for this series we are going to be making a park on a miniaturized version of of Site B itself, Isla Sorna. Now, I was going to do one of the other islands, like Isla Nublar first, however, since Evolution Square had already done that, and is currently making her way through Manticore Island, I figured it would only be fair that I work on Isla Sorna first. That way there's no if ands, or buts, or some confrontation, I guess you could say, from fans or stuff, and I don't want to get into all that politicalness. I'm here to just have fun and to give you guys the best content that I can through Isla Sorna's build. Now for this, I will be doing an episode weekly, hopefully, unless something comes up that causes a delay of the episode, and, well, I hope you guys will enjoy it and such, and if you guys want to see a speed build on, like, how to build Isla Sorna as a whole, since this one's a little bit shortened up, I will showcase this. Now, for this um, map, I did actually use the Biosyn map instead of Isla Nublar, because I figured that S S the Sorna feel would be better for us to use the Biosyn map rather than Nublar, because, well, part of Isla Sorna is a jungle map, um, the majority of Isla Sorna is known for its redwood biome, and since we don't have a redwood biome properly, I figured that this one was the best to work with, as well, it works for the feeling that Isla Sorna gives, and also, it honestly is just way better to use. Now, as you can see, we are making the grid and such at the moment, which I did a 19 by 19 grid, so for my Isla Sorna, so I would recommend doing the same if you ever want to build a map as well. And also I recommend definitely saving the grid for future parts, so if you want to use the same island for two mini islands or stuff, I guess, I would definitely recommend saving it and stuff. And also if you do build that island, I'd recommend making a save file that's just the island completed first. That way if like for some reason something happens to your main save, it would be in your best interest to, well, not lose it completely because then that would be exhausting making an island again. As in my case, as you can see, we started building Isla Sorna as it is, and I started from the top and stuff, and it started off really well. The grid and stuff, that took like about 30 minutes. The building of Isla Sorna and lining it took a lot longer. It, in fact, took me about two and a half hours and that's because I made a few mistakes at some point specifically when we got to the bottom on the eastern side I accidentally cloned them um, multiple square sections so that made it basically like a quarter extra size by the time I got to the bottom and when I got to the bottom well I kind of couldn't really build it because, well, I didn't have any space to build it. Which also, a little bonus tip, I guess, is, I guess this would work, is definitely build, um, once you build the squares, once you have it gridded and such, I would definitely recommend first, um, filling the ones that you know you'll have no land mass in with water. As you guys can see currently, I have done this. This way it keeps you from accidentally going into those ones and then you don't have to worry about them too much. It's a little um, weird tip, but it just helps you psychologically without like thinking, oh, there's that many spaces open, are we sure that we went through them? If they're in water already, then you know you don't have to touch them because you will have nothing there. And it just makes it easier. And for Sorna, like, this one got tricky because I got stuck not only on the eastern side twice, but I also got stuck on the bottom river, the sort of webbed one with many island pieces, that one was quite a painful one to work on, not gonna lie, because even though, like, the terrain tool is easy and stuff, it kind of is, like, the only downside of Biosyn map is it's not, like, the sand or snow on, like, Nublar or something like Canada, which, also, gotta say, it's weird that Biosyn map doesn't have, 
no option when the entire map is surrounded by snowy mountains. Kind of weird if you ask me. Then again, it is like a very humid section, so makes sense really, but also I still want all the um, terrain options available in Sandbox. I mean, it makes sense after all. So Frontier, if you love us, please make sure that happens soon. Maybe a future update, perhaps. Now, in terms of the island and such, I would I went through many different versions on like Google and such for which version to use. Luckily, it's not as complicated as it is with Isla Nublar, where that island canonically has changed shape so many times and such, it's ridiculous. Then again, if you look at this through like the novel version of Sorna, then you know that um Isla Sorna drastically changed, but in terms of like the film version, it hasn't changed too much. But the one I ended up going with was this one that you see on screen, which shows it very detailed and such in comparison to other ones that I considered, and that's what really that's what really made me go with the one I wanted. I think it just fixed all that I needed. It was quite detailed and really didn't have any issues with like drawing it up once I gridded it. And also, honestly, like this one was really easy to use in comparison to the other one. That's why I did have a delay originally because I actually ended up using a different version originally, but that one was not really showing enough detail for like the smaller rivers that I just decided to switch it up for the one I ended up going with. But all in all, it was really good and quite fun. And now guys, as you can see, we started cutting through the um, water with the water tool around the island, which actually went um, much faster than I thought. Even for the massive river split, the only tricky part was mainly the islands. But as you can see, I made it thicker for the river section than it did, and just started cutting back into the land as needed when I got to those points. It was tricky for some, like see as you can see there it's like a little branch piece plus a little mini island which i know those like mini islands don't really do anything for like you know space to use or stuff unless i make it like a part of an enclosure but it's a nice little detail just for like the aerial view and it makes it a little bit more accurate which for me as an ocd patient zero i absolutely needed it to be the best that it could be and Otherwise, I would have been driven insane. I would have looked at the map and been like, yeah, those mini islands are there. Which also, I, I don't show it right here, but I actually did make the other two miniature islands that are just off the coast of Isla Sorna. One of them you'll actually see a little bit later, which we used. And in this video, guys, for the majority of the speed build, we didn't end up building much of the park, but we did bi build the entry point which I was gonna do like regular time and such for that but when I was originally editing this down for like the speed build portion of the map I realized that it was getting too long that I think it wouldn't have worked because I really wanted to have the policy of every time we build something in like these videos there would be a guaranteed showcase of a dinosaur or something just makes sense like you don't you don't come to Jurassic World Evolution to to just build a park. You also come to see, well, whatchamacallit, uh, you came to see the dinosaurs. But I guess that's my own policy. Maybe you guys disagree, but there were no dinosaurs placed on the island today, even though the thumbnail will showcase um, the T-Rexes and their Evolution 2 counterparts, as well as their film counterparts. But it's just to get the views, of course, and get your attention, guys. I hope you guys understand about that, but if you don't, it's okay. And when I finished elevating the land a little bit, just for like safety, I realized that I wanted to add a mountain range, and this was a sort of smart way to separate the two sections. Where I did it actually is basically the line for where it separates the jungle and redwood biomes, but it might be one side is going to be more security styled, so like maybe the hybrids will go there or something, and the other side, the redwood section, will be more park based. I think that's what I might end up doing. I might add a little bit more to it since it's a big section on both sides, but who knows? I think it really did end up working out, and I loved how it looked as well, even though it's not accurate to where the mountains were actually. But 
Anyway, as you can see, the map is built. It is absolutely gorgeous. I had so much fun with this, even though it did take a long time, and my god, it was well worth it. I mean, look at that from above. Absolutely gorgeous. Now is where we get into the um, park building area. So the first section is not the entry point, but this section that I made was in fact my sort of um, secure, off-site security section. Think of it as the control room from Isla Nublar's Jurassic World, but this time I have it just off the coast, so that way it's as safe as possible. Though, when you think about it, those jeeps aren't going to be really helpful because they can't drive in the ocean. Unless you pay 50000 I recently found out, you can get a motorized, a semi-aquatic vehicle, which was kind of weird to find out, but you know what? If I make 50000 someday, guys, maybe I'll buy that for you. Just to say, alright, I've got an aquatic boat. Or aquatic car, actually. But anyway, as you guys see, I'm fencing this whole thing on. And for the current time, I think it's alright. But I might actually take the fence off because I'm kind of iffy on, like, does it really fit? And also, you see me um, change it to concrete. So I'm as indecisive as possible. And for the inside, I just decorated it very security-like. So I had, like, some sheds and stuff. The Jurassic Park um, maintenance shed as well is even there. And a little medical vehicle, I think that is. And some lights and some security cameras that just really make sure that it's like, yep, this is only security-based. And the way that it's no longer deactivated is I did add a, um, I think it's a DFW um, version of the um, entryway, which just makes it still not have the notification of, oh, I'm not connected, whatever. But then we moved on to the entryway, which for this, I actually, <laughs> this is where, this is where you know that insanity starts because I f was really struggling on where I wanted to do it because I wanted to have it in a place that I could connect both the security section, which is basically, if I ever say the jungle section of Isla Sarna, that's where my security area was. I was struggling with that for, like, design. Then I picked this little itty-bitty pocket here that, like, made, like, a nice viewpoint for the island as a whole and also would work. And also I kept on changing the path idea because my first idea was to have it nice and fully open and then, like, you know, just wrapped around. And then that way I could have, like, some guest facilities there, like, I meant a lot like I was thinking like putting three and like doing them in rows and as you can see here I start like stretching it out and making like a weird path choice it was a weird one even for me like I don't even know why I made this like end point but I did make it and it I liked it but then I realized like it wasn't gonna give me the space I want so in a moment you'll actually see me just like delete it and then, like, switch it out for a ring, but it was not working out. Eventually, I do land on a plan, but as you can see, like, yeah, even the smallest building, like, I'm going to get one in there, but I'm going to be able to have no proper space, and I don't want to crowd it too much. I wanted to have it, like, nice and organized in a way, and besides, I wanted to have some funky path designs, but I realized um, shortly that this was not going to work, and so what I did was I actually end up switching it, I think, three times? It's been, a, it, as of voice recording this, guys, it's been a quite a while since I actually looked at this, but, like, as you can see, yeah, I'm trying to get a hotel in there, and it's like, yeah, no, that's blocking the view of the visitor center, first of all, and also is not going to give me any space for path design. At least that's what my thought process was, but then I realized it was really not going to work, like, the shape of it was not working for styles that I wanted to, so eventually I just cut it all out, and I start going with this ring as well, but then again, me being a um, sort of a self-critic and picky bugger, I decided not to go with this one because I wanted to have s some separation between the path that went towards the security section and the path that was going, of course, to the rest of the island. 
And I led to this final option, where I deleted all of that work except for the visitor center because that was easy to keep. Don't know why I switched the ring, but what I ended up doing was I made a path section that was heading to the direction where my security section of this entire island would be, and what I did was I built a fence around it, which normally I don't do, but I think it fits for what I wanted to do at this moment. And I actually end up switching this a little bit later on. I decide to change the position of my, I think it's the arrival point. And also I widen it a little bit because I'm going to add a few things to it to just make it stand out. Not Nothing too fancy, but you know, just keep it separated. And because the visitor center has two entryways, it is absolutely good. And as you can see, I am using my signature bush to hide the little gap because weirdly the fence doesn't want to get so close, but the bush does. And also now you see me being so picky with the path that like literally I go through this like a few times and then it fi I finally am like, okay, that works, even though it's like the exact same for each time, which is like, you think you've changed it, but you haven't really, Austin, so please just stop trying. And also there's me here just being like, God damn it, why will you not work? And this is where like the... I will state that I'm going to set a rule that, like, no matter what happens, if something doesn't work to fit on the island, I am not going to reshape the island, because then it won't be East Lasorna, guys. It'll be just, like, a, a random island. But in this case, what I needed to do was figure out how to get that um, visitor center to work with the um, helipad, which eventually I do realize that I want to have, like, a concrete... I use the multi-buildings here, actually, that's the ones, to make a nice divide, but I realized very quickly that the water um, thing was a problem. So what I did was I, I did edit the terrain, I will be setting it back as it is, but I made the um, design piece that I wanted first, just before then, and I would set, because as you can see there, it's being way too sensitive, even though I'm like miles away from it. But just fixing it there, I do what I need to, and after like a few moments of like struggling to align it up, I get everything all nice and organized with that. Then, it, But then I have to switch to the crumbled one, which, god, I love the multi DLC tools. They are absolutely perfect for this game. Like, they are so easily usable that it, it's ridiculous. Like, I... I just wish we had more Malta stuff, not gonna lie. Sorry if you guys can hear like a car speeding, there's a mor moron, excuse my language, going around. Now, I was gonna continue the fence all, the not the fence, sorry, the um, Malta like little s divider piece. I was gonna keep going, but I realized I didn't really want it to look all the way through, because if I did, then I'd have the obligation to do it on the other side of the river, and it just wouldn't work as a in a final conclusion. So what I did was I used the rocks to stop it at one point. That way I didn't go too far with it, but I went far enough so it wasn't like going, okay, okay, calm down. So I did that, and now that I have the helipad where it is, I also added the water. But as you'll see in a few moments, you'll see me, um, well, how do I put it? change it up again. Don't worry, I don't delete all of the work that I just did. I just make a slight adapting technique to it because it was just not working the way it was needing, but I knew how to make it work for what I wanted, which will happen in just a moment as I think that I've got it all covered, but realizing this helipad is way too sensitive, it's ridiculous. Like, You'll see me being like, oh, for gosh sakes, really? Why is this thing so ridiculous? And so I demolish it, and I decide I'm going to stick it at the back of the security section. That way I don't have to worry about it too much or how much it frustrates me. And then that way I can get a little bit more space in for the guests, I guess is the right word. Which, honestly, this flows much better that way, like... Guests can come out and either head straight to the visitor center 
or also just head straight to the interior of the park. And also it gives me, it honestly gave me more space to like do some funky stuff that I end up doing with the path, if I'm not mistaken, which honestly is the real important thing. If I can't go crazy with designs, am I really building a park or am I just building a boring, boring path? Which, oh my god, I can't, right, I kept on being like, god damn it, will it please stop being sensitive? Which, funny enough, like, you can get, like, planters and, like, foliage and all that stuff so close, but for some reason, the paths and, like, fences for some of these buildings are so sensitive, it's ridiculous. It drives me bananas. And as you can see, I start getting a little bit crazy with the path. I'm starting a little... Uh, two-thirds of a dollar sign, I guess you could say. And then I, like, decided to add some planter boxes, which is what those squares will be. I changed them into nice, lovely planter boxes because I like having the plant it, plants and stuff. And again, I use the um, multi-brick wall thing again, which was actually working quite well. I start by using, like, it as a square thing, but I realize it's kind of a little too big for... Um, what it should be and so I switch it out with I use the long ones but I think I also use the um, what you call it I think I yeah I use the um, smaller section and stuff and use this as like the middle section which worked out really nicely as you'll see in a few moments and I do this on both sides and stuff and for the um, circular bits I actually will end up switching them out I was gonna do pretty much the exact same thing but I switched that out too. And as you can see, here's me being like, it's got a match on both sides, Austin, or you're crazy. And me being like, oh, it's just got to be right. And as you can see, I am so, uh, how do you put it? Picky. I'm so picky, it's ridiculous. No wonder my live streams go so long, but I don't get much done because I am more picky than I can help. But I'm sorry, guys. I'm an OCD addict. And also, you know, it's got to be right. But I think one of the best things about this series, and I think any time you build, like, a mini island or, like, a shape that you have to stick with, I think it's a good therapy for me. This island is going to be, like, my therapy session because, like, I always think I have to keep it, like, formal and, like, you know properly straight paths or stuff or if circulars have a nice have a proper flow but sometimes it's these risky flows like this one that you already see here that make it much more beautiful and also stand out better i guess is the right word and hopefully i'll be able to continue this series without like trying to be like oh it's so crazy there'll probably be moments where i'm driving myself crazy because like i want it perfect but Nothing in life is perfect, Austin, so you gotta just let that go. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, guys. A little bit of a burp, because, well, I just drank a lot of water, and which normally doesn't make me burp, but I guess today it does. But, as you can see, I start filling it in, and this is where, like, it gets a little bit slow. I just am literally filling this up right now. Like, nothing is going on at all. But in terms of, like, the first enclosure and stuff, I'm thinking we'll probably end up doing T-Rex or something. I'm not sure. But now, as you can see, we get to the um, circular bits. And I start by using the dividers, but then eventually I'm going to switch them off because it's like, I don't need to repeat it from the other ones. The other ones are like, they're fine. So I will end up switching them out. And also, I will realize I made the circle um, longer on one side than the other, which was like, oh my god, that, that's the OCD that I can never escape, no matter what. If one circle is supposed to be mirroring another, and they're not, oh, you'll be a, so sorry, Austin, the OCD lords will destroy you. So, I start adding, like, a rock and some lights and stuff, because, like, I do love the lights in this game, like, they are so colorful, which also... I will say, I don't show it here, but I I really wish that we could... Oh, uh, yep, here's where we... Here's where I'm like, oh no, 
This one's longer. No! This is where devastation truly hits hard. It hammers you. It ends you. And that's where I'm like, okay, how many are these? And I'm like, okay, just eyeball it and never speak about it again. And that's where I'm like, no, I've got to make sure it's accurate. So I delete all my work on the other, which is just like, yay, more time on this damn half circles. And I... Well, then again, it did lead to this um, satisfying idea that I had, which was, like, a nice little weird path design. I added two, like, little singular lines, which, I mean, to each their own. And then I decided, you know what, let's go for the amber section. And, you know, guys, like, this, I started adding the lights and stuff, and I realized immediately here, like, what I wanted to do with those two lines. Originally, I was going to... I think I was going to put trees originally, but then I was like, no, no, that's not going to work. Like, why am I doing the trees there? That's that's not right. So eventually, I will move off. <laughs> and so I get around to the back ends and I just, you know, add the little foliage and stuff because I'm like, you know what? I want to make it nice. I want to make it pretty. And I think I switch it out for a tree for the middle one. Yeah, I do. And... Oh, I, went, I forgot I went for that one. I thought normally I would go for something way more colorful, but, you know, you gotta try them all. See which ones work. As um, Pokemon said, gotta catch them all, but in this case, gotta try them all. Which, don't, don't listen to that if it's other things. Now, as you can see, I made my decision for what I was gonna do with the lines, and I was gonna use one of the Biosyn light copper panels because these things are absolutely amazing i just love using them like not only for this but i actually love using them to like a weird fascination i have with them is they remind me of like security or something so sometimes i'll actually use them to like better secure my fences quote unquote which is like weird but in this case i'm just making two nice blades and then over here in the planters, I actually decide to add, like, the Biosyn water fountains. At least, like, one of the versions and such. But it started causing a little bit of trouble. But I managed to fit it in. And then we started going for the plants. Which I went for mainly the most tropical looking, I guess. To get the nice sprucing of vibrancy that they give. I was going to use, like, big redwoods and stuff here. But I was like... No, that's not going to work. It's going to be too big. And then I'm like, well, let's get some little plants as well. You know, just get it a little bush. Which, not going to lie, I thought the hitboxes on these plants were a lot less sensitive. Like, they're way better than the first game. Trust me, guys. But I thought they would have been a little bit nicer to me this time. But, you know what? It worked out very nicely. Got the plants in that I needed. And it was looking... Nice and simple. Nothing too fancy, but you know what? There's plenty of Sorna to go around. I'll probably do a weird path design later because I am mad with my paths because, well, they're just fun to use, I guess. But this one, you know, simple but functional. Now is where we... I know we still have part of the um, front to do for this, but I kind of forgot about it when I got it a a spark in my brain that was like, ooh, I can do this with it. And so I decided to have like a little scan section for security. I ended up using the um, DFW version of the bathroom for some reason. Don't know why I picked that. I could have just used the security bunker or something. But anyway, I guess it worked because like other than the bathroom sign, it kind of looks like a little booth section. Af well, I say that, but then again, the Jurassic World bathroom is literally the gift shop that the Indominus tries to grab Owen and the kids from, if I'm not mistaken. So, I mean, if Jurassic World gets away with use stocking toys in a bathroom, I'm pretty sure we could get away with it for scanning our security. But then I decide, let's fill in the rest of it over here on the front. And this is where I made, like, a little bit of a booth section, or, like, not a booth section, but, like, a nice little rest stop, I guess. And, of course, the vein of putting these tiny little lights and stuff. Which, also, one thing I will say about the lights is I wish they were more intense, and, more importantly, I wish there were taller lights or something. Or, like, the, um, I think it's the lagoon ones, the ones that, like, are the little projector ones that are from underground and stuff, 
or like those ones that like you can point and like they sh shoot a beam of light at one section. I really want those to um, get land versions because they would be so great for like exhibits or something. And also would be really good for thumbnails, not gonna lie, because I was trying to I was trying to get like a shot of like T-Rex with like a flare and stuff, and oh my god, the flares are a pain in my neck. I wish they were still on the helicopter, but I, I know I'm rambling on here, but it's important, like Frontier, like if you can give us those lights and put them on land as well, it'll be so good for some people, including me. Now is where I got more fancy, and I decided to add the first of many, many fountains, I won't lie, to my little section. Now is where we get onto the lights, which... Also, that little section with the two red flags, I did end up changing a little bit. I don't think I have it here, unfortunately. I think I forgot to record it. But I changed it a little bit to make it, like, a little bit more tighter. You'll see it in the next video, but it doesn't matter for this one. And also, you see me um, questioning, what do I want to do with these lights? Do I want to go, like, multiple? But then I realized, like, some of them will overpower the others, so what I did was simple. I went one side green, one side blue, and for this side, these little ones by the um, arrival point, I changed them to purple, which, not gonna lie, they don't really sit too well, but they work. And also, oh yeah, here's where I made another little change. I decided to add, a, I guess, a little nook for some reason. I think it's like, I, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, I use rocks and stuff, which, oh my god, I was getting so pissed off with the with the helicopter um, for this, because it's like, I'm nowhere near the damn thing, but you guys are being way too sensitive. Am I gonna t hurt you? And even, like, with the smaller rocks. But I got it to work. I managed to make it work, and it looked nice. But, but I mean, come on, seriously, look how close you can get to the fence. But the helipad, the helipad's basically stuck in Jurassic World Evolution 1. That's how close you could get them in that game. And then I started adding some nice trees and stuff. And I, I say that and it's the first two are dead, kind of, or dormant. And then some redwoods and voila, guys. We got to Isla Sorna and oh my god, I am out of breath. Not gonna lie, but this series will be like long guys because like i thought it was gonna be like i knew it was gonna be big at least for the map and stuff but my god like isla sorna is huge and i've actually built a mini nublar before never for like the channel but i did it for like other things but yeah whatever it works but i just want to say guys thank you for all the support that you guys have been giving lately i'm I'm back doing a lot more stuff for you guys, and I hope to continue doing stuff as well. And I hope this series will be the beginning of, like, our growth, because, well, I'm already having so much fun, like, building it. Like, I was smiling at the fact that I was doing a series, which I don't think we've done any series on Evolution 2 since Jurassic World. But, anyway, guys, I just want to say thank you, and if you haven't already hit the like button to show your support for this hit the subscribe button to join the hunt thank you so much for walk walking not walking i'm um, thank you for watching liking subscribing joining the patreon perhaps and until the next one guys stay safe and i'll see you later Bye bye